Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back uh, for part two of the unbelievable streak of The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Uh, like I say, thanks very much for returning. I hope you enjoyed the last one. Please go and check it out uh, from victories uh, 1 to 10. Uh, and now going forward, we're going into uh, WrestleMania 19. Now, previously, uh, in 2002 at WrestleMania 18, The Undertaker had defeated Ric Flair and became 10-0, unprecedented at the time. And uh, going forward into 2003 at uh, WrestleMania 19, uh, for the first time, The Undertaker was actually going uh, into a tag team match originally. It was meant to be uh, The Undertaker and a newcomer called Nathan Jones against uh, The Big Show and Albert, a.k.a. Uh, A-Train, a.k.a. Uh, Matt Bloom, the uh, head trainer for NXT. Uh, but for s somehow uh, they felt that Nathan Jones was very, very green at the time and uh, he actually ended up getting pulled uh, from that event. Uh, they made up a storyline saying that he got uh, injured uh, prior to the event. So The Undertaker being The Undertaker went for it at, as a two-on-one handicap match and anybody that knows anything about The Undertaker, that does not bother him. He went straight ahead for it. Uh, they start. So they started off, uh, The Undertaker was going to the Big Show in one corner, he was going into Albert at the other corner, and he was just going for a hundred miles an hour. Uh, really, really unbelievable feat, uh, especially going up against uh, two people the size of The Big Show and Albert. Uh, really, really good match as well. Uh, can't fault that match at all. Uh, for it being a two-on-one handicap match, but it's The Undertaker, you know, uh, it's going to be a great match any, uh, in any feat, but as I've said previously, you know, there's some uh, WrestleMania matches that are a few doozies, even going forward, there's a few as well, uh, so going towards the end of the match, we actually find that Nathan Jones is okay, uh, he comes down uh, to help The Undertaker, uh, but The Big Show incapacitates him uh, and Nathan Jones actually gives The Big Show a roundhouse kick that almost uh, took The Big Show's head off. Uh, and Nathan Jones is very, very lucky that The Big Show didn't knock him out that day. Andy <laughs> uh, that saw the match back, when you see the kick that Nathan Jones gives a big show, you're thinking to yourself, what the heck was that? Uh, but, you know, Tombstone Power Driver to Albert and The Undertaker wins that match. Uh, the entrance to that uh, WrestleMania was pretty cool as well. Uh, Limp Bizkit, anybody that remembers who Limp Bizkit is, uh, was actually playing The Undertaker's uh, Dead Man Walking theme uh, rolling. So The Undertaker had come out on his motorcycle with Old Glory and he did just what he did at the previous WrestleMania of 17 and 18. He just revved his bad boy up and just took off straight to the ring, had a little uh, party with Fred Dursk in the, uh, in the ring uh, and the Undertaker also dedicated that match to his nephew who was in the armed forces with holding up Old Glory at the end of the match of his victory. So that was pretty cool. WrestleMania in 19 was a cool, cool entrance. Good WrestleMania overall for The Undertaker. Now, before we go forward into 2004, uh, before we leave 2003, uh, The Undertaker was nursing some injuries again uh, and he needed time off so he worked into a program with uh, Vince McMahon where uh, at the Survivor Series uh, they f 
fought off against each other in a buried alive match and uh, with the help of the big red machine Kane uh, Vince McMahon actually uh, came out on top of that and the American badass the big evil version of the Undertaker had faded away and he uh, was no longer to be uh, so going into uh, 2004 very early of 2004 uh, things were happening to Kane uh, whether it was in his matches or uh, during back backstage segments where uh, the Undertaker's old mind games was getting played up now the Undertaker had not played mind games uh, for a long time up to this point uh, and it let and they left hints that the original dead man was returning uh, and it culminated to uh, Kane and the Undertaker part two at WrestleMania 20 where it all began again now Kane has come out he is in the ring awaiting for the Undertaker and the lighting treatment starts lights go out and all you hear is this oh yes and that crowd pop reaction that i've spoke about in a previous video everybody know who that knew who that was it was paul bearer paul bearer had returned and even jerry the king lawler had a bit of a squeak in his voice as well and he would said to jr oh my god it's him it's paul bearer and oh my goodness what a reaction that was uh paul bearer had led out druids sort of in the similar style as to what the undertaker's entrance was at wrestlemania 14 and the gong had went off and out walked onto a stage was not the american badass not the big evil not the original dead man but something completely different altogether. The, what The Undertaker had done is he took his original Dead Man, he took the American Badass and Big Evil, and he combined it all together into one hybrid. So that is how The Undertaker was going forward. When he came out on the stage, he was in his hat, long black trench coat and it just looked spectacular uh he walked down to the ring and kane had that fear look on his face as if to say he's not real he's not real kane actually went to go and touch him to check out if, his, if he was real and the undertaker just stepped kane and you knew right away that he was definitely real so both guys were off to the races in this match and oh what a match it was it wasn't as good as uh, their encounter at wrestlemania 14 but still an overall good match and of course the undertaker won with a tombstone pal driver and the undertaker and paul bearer were temporarily off to the races again now uh, we're leaving tw 2014 here and we're going forward into 2005 at WrestleMania 21, uh, where WrestleMania went Hollywood, and it was the legend of The Undertaker versus the legend killer of Randy Orton. Now, Randy Orton had uh, not that long just came out of Evolution, or sorry, booted out of Evolution, and he was making a name of, for himself. Now, who better to make a name for himself against than The Undertaker? So they had set up a match with each other and wow, what a match it was. Uh, the Undertaker had come out with his entrance. Now, like I say, it was sort of like a, a Hollywood star effect because the because it was WrestleMania went Hollywood. Uh, and The Undertaker is at the stage and then all of a sudden he's levitating towards the stage uh, smoke had covered his legs and feet so you couldn't see if he was walking or not and it was actually Taz that was doing the commentary 
at the time and he goes wow he he's not walking that that that's freaky so you know that was the mind game is straight away to randy orton that what the heck is going on with the undertaker he can do that uh but Randy Orton made his way to the ring after that and both of them were off to the races and Randy Orton was that good that you actually thought that this was going to be it, that Randy Orton was going to be the first person to take The Undertaker's uh, undefeated streak at WrestleMania. Uh, we're to the point where Randy Orton even got The Undertaker in the position for a Tombstone power driver but The Undertaker countered delivered his own Tombstone power driver himself and of course The Undertaker is undefeated again at WrestleMania. Now going forward into 2006 at WrestleMania 22, uh, The Undertaker is in a casket match this time. Uh, not, we have not had a casket match in uh, at WrestleMania yet for The Undertaker so this is the first. Uh, but he was going up against Mark Henry. Now, no disrespect to Mark Henry and anybody that knows me uh, uh, knows that I do not I do not rate Mark Henry as a wrestler. That is just completely my own opinion. Other people are allowed their own opinion, uh, as I've always said, every to their own. So, you know, I don't rate Mark Henry as a wrestler, and plus. This match, which is a casket match, it's the Undertaker's specialty, you need to be on game. And yeah, and Mark Henry just, it felt like that he was not on game that day. Uh, the Undertaker was carrying him a lot throughout that match. Uh, but the match went forward and uh, the Undertaker did manage to tombstone power drive uh, Mark Henry, put him in the casket and that closed the lid on that rivalry then and there. Uh, so, uh, going forward into 2007 at WrestleMania uh, 23, uh, long overdue this had been, uh, The Undertaker had won the Royal Rumble that year, so his fate was signed and sealed for a title match at WrestleMania 23. Excuse me. But at this time, the WWF, WWE had uh, three world championships. They had the ECW championship held by Bobby Lashley. They had uh, the World Heavyweight Championship held by Batista. And they had the WWF, WWE Championship held by John Cena. Now, The Undertaker had three choices here. And he chose to go for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, against Batista. Now the reason why The Undertaker had uh, went for the uh, World Heavyweight Championship, no disrespect to the ECW title I'm sure, but the World Heavyweight Championship was the big gold traditional looking belt and The Undertaker is a, anybody that knows anything about The Undertaker, he is an old school traditional uh, wrestler so he went for that and and all and as far as i know i believe he did not like the look of the spinner belt that was around at the time had it been the undisputed title he probably would have went for that but uh he saw something in batista at the time and wanted to go for the world heavyweight championship on top of that so the gong goes off at wrestlemania and so does the machine gun for Dave Batista, and both guys are just going at full throttle, like what a previous match was like at WrestleMania 12 with Kevin Nash. Uh, the Undertaker and Batista were like two bulls going at it. Neither one were giving up. You know, uh, one of the best, best matches from Dave Batista, and one of the greatest matches from The Undertaker as well. Uh, but unfortunately for them, they were not the main event that night at WrestleMania. It was actually the WWF WWE Championship match that was the main event. And both wrestlers were actually quite vocal about that as soon as the match was over uh, and went backstage and they turned around and said to everybody, follow that. And uh, 
you know, that's, it's not like The Undertaker to be vocal like that, uh, but he was. Uh, but prior to him uh, leaving the ring, uh, if MD remembers the, picture, the famous picture that I've talked about with him holding the WWF Championship at uh, WrestleMania 13, The Undertaker does the exact same picture at WrestleMania 23. It was almost as if it was a 10 year mirror image of each other. Uh, it was a really, really cool moment with The Undertaker doing his pose, holding the World Heavyweight Championship. It was really, really cool. Uh, unfortunately, uh, after Backlash, The Undertaker did not have it very long that year of 2007. Uh, the Undertaker got injured at Backlash and they needed the, uh, uh, the title taken off him. The Undertaker really didn't want to forfeit the title. Uh, so they needed the belt off him. Now the rated R superstar Edge had just beaten uh, Mr. Kennedy for the Money in the Bank contract. So Edge was on Raw at the time and he went to SmackDown and Edge being the ultimate opportunist uh, cashed in the Money in the Bank contract. Now the, uh, keep in mind The Undertaker had just been in a steel cage match with Dave Batista in a rematch on SmackDown and uh, The Undertaker had won that match. Mark Henry had came out from the shadows uh, and flattened The Undertaker. So The Undertaker was not in the best shape, but like I say, Edge being the ultimate opportunist, he took opportunity of the dead man, cashed in that Money in the Bank contract and speared The Undertaker, I believe, either once or twice, and Edge became the new World Heavyweight Champion, uh, and The Undertaker was able to fade away and nurse his injuries. Now, a year later, uh, The Undertaker wanted revenge against Edge. Edge was the World Heavyweight Champion at the time, so The Undertaker thought to himself, how can I uh, get my revenge? And he entered the Elimination Chamber in February. He won that, and that secured the victory for him going up against Edge at WrestleMania 24. And, oh my goodness me, what a match this was. Uh, this was unbelievable. The Undertaker had come out in uh, his in a bat and uh, old Batman slash Dracula kind of, excuse me, trench coat. Very mythical, uh, very mysterious, but very, very cool. Edge had come out uh, to almost a rock and roll uh, style entrance with pyro and everything like that. And it visually looked really, really cool. Uh, and both guys went off to the races here. Uh, they were, Edge was going here and there, everywhere. The Undertaker was going here, there and everywhere. And what a match this was. Uh, this, this really helped elevate Edge as well. Uh, and also, this was the main event as well, which was what should have been the year earlier for The Undertaker. But at least he got his main event shot at WrestleMania this year. And what a match it was. Unbelievable. Uh, so The Undertaker won that match and became the World Heavyweight Champion again. Uh, and he done the very similar pose as what he done the year prior. So it was a cool shot and a cool way to end WrestleMania that year. And now, going forward, I'm going to have one, two, three, four parts here because this is actually an overall story of several matches together. They are the Shawn Michaels uh, matches and they're also the Triple H matches. So the first two matches are WrestleMania 25 and WrestleMania 26. And at WrestleMania 25 in uh, Houston, Texas, oh my goodness, what a match this was between The Undertaker and uh, Shawn Michaels. Unbelievable match. One of the top uh, five matches of The Undertaker. Uh, by far. Uh, Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker had faced each other before. Their last big, big encounter was actually 
at the Royal Rumble 98 for the WWF Championship. There was no championships on the line here. It was just two Texans going at it. Uh, what a match. Unbelievable. Shawn Michaels was up here, down there, left, right. So was The Undertaker. Now, unfortunately, The Undertaker actually did a boo in this uh, match where Shawn Michaels was out of the ring and he positioned a stuntman in position uh, and The Undertaker took a chance, an unnecessary chance, may I add. He went for a swan dive to go over onto Shawn Michaels. The stunt guy was meant to catch The Undertaker, but unfortunately The Undertaker just went down into the mat. And how the heck The Undertaker did not break his neck, I do not know. Uh, it's All that totally sucked the, all the air out of the arena. Uh, me and my buddy... Uh, Ryan Martin PT was actually watching that match and we were gobsmacked of what happened. Uh, somehow The Undertaker got up, somehow The Undertaker finished the match and he even won the match and that continued the streak going from there. Going forward into WrestleMania 26, uh, it was now... The streak versus Shawn Michaels' career. Shawn Michaels has actually put his career on the line against The Undertaker. And it was a great, great match. Not as great as the year before, but certainly a top contender for it. And I can't fault this match at all. Uh, it was actually... They, they actually learned from their... The, the WWF WWE actually learned from their mistakes earlier uh, last year because Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker WrestleMania 25 match was actually before the main event. So with that sucking all the air out of the arena, uh, by the time you got to the World Heavyweight Championship match and the WWF WWE Championship match, there was no air left, you know, in the arena. Nobody really gave a shit. Uh, so... They had learned their lesson and put The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels in the main event at uh, WrestleMania 26. And as everybody knows, uh, The Undertaker won that match and uh, Shawn Michaels, his career had come to an end. And uh, that, was, that, was pretty hot. that was pretty sad. Uh, I even had a tear in my eye that, that day as well. Uh, it was hard to see Shawn Michaels go. But, you know, it was uh, pretty awesome at the same time. Uh, and now going forward to WrestleMania 27, we have Triple H Part 2 slash uh, Part 3-ish, uh, where they had already faced each other uh, at WrestleMania uh, 17. So 10 years later, uh, they're facing each other again. And all this was, was revenge on Triple H's part going up against uh, The Undertaker on Shawn Michaels' part. So both of them had met each other a few a couple months prior, stood in front of the ring with each other, did not say a word, looked up at the WrestleMania sign, and it was just that look with each other that everybody knew that the two of them were going to go at uh, WrestleMania 27. So... Uh, what a match it was. Uh, Triple H had come out in his theatrical King of Kings get up. Looked spectacular. The Undertaker came out in his uh, Dead Man Hybrid uh, get up. And it all just looked visually spectacular. And uh, both guys off to the races. Going at 100 miles an hour. Really, really brutal match uh, in a good way. Uh, and it got to a point where you really really thought Triple H was going to do it you thought he could have ended the uh, streak right here uh, to the point where he actually tombstone power drived The Undertaker now nobody <laughs> tombstone power drives The Undertaker unless you're Kane you know uh, but Triple H tombstone power drived The Undertaker even done the Undertaker pose and uh Thankfully, The Undertaker kicked out. 
and uh, you just saw uh, the Undertaker was ready to go again. Uh, he had uh, Triple H in m many holds after that, uh, a Dragon Sleeper, uh, everything that the Undertaker could try and do to win, he eventually did win uh, with that Dragon Sleeper. Uh, Triple H had tapped out, uh, but unfortunately it was a bittersweet victory for The Undertaker because The Undertaker had walked out to the ring, but he was actually carried out on a stretcher. Uh, the previous year, WrestleManias were just basically catching up to The Undertaker. You know, he was not the same uh, after this. Uh, so, after the match, the Undertaker actually took some time off uh, to recharge himself. Uh, and a year later, at WrestleMania 28, both guys were going at it again. Whereas, but this time, Shawn Michaels was a special guest referee. So you had The Undertaker, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels all in the rings at the same time. And the match was titled End of an Era. Now, Andy that knows anything about me knows that I'm a, a classic uh, WWF, WWE buff. Uh, and my error is the Attitude Error. Okay, so they, The Undertaker and Triple H were the last set of guys from that era. So it, the match was titled End of an Era. It was so fitting. Uh, the only negative about this, it was not really a wrestling match. It was more a fight between both superstars uh, because chairs got used, sledgehammers got used, uh, the cell even got used, you know, it was more a fight. I mean, even Shawn Michaels managed to get a super kick on The Undertaker, uh, even though that he was the special, the special guest referee. Uh, and it came to the point where Triple H, you really, really thought Triple H was going to win here. He even asked Shawn Michaels to call it. Shawn Michaels chose not to, and then it got flipped around, and The Undertaker done the same thing. Uh, and it came to be that The Undertaker did win that match, 20 I know at this point, and uh, when the match was over, they all broke key fed, they all embraced each other, there's even a shot with all three of them on the stage where you have The Undertaker, Triple H and Shawn Michaels looking out of the crowd as if to say thank you. Uh, it's a really, really great shot. Triple H even has a portrait, excuse me, of it made for him, The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels with The Undertaker's uh, glove, tr Triple H's tape and Shawn Michaels' referee top and it just it looks magical. Uh, a really, really touching portrait. Now, keep in mind, The Undertaker was at 20 and 0 there, okay? In my opinion, and even The Undertaker said it himself, he was thinking of just calling it a day there. 20 and 0, great number to finish on. But no, uh, go forward into uh, WrestleMania 29, and The Undertaker was called upon again. Uh, but this time, it was from the best in the world, CM Punk. Uh, and quite recently, uh, Paul Bearer had died, uh, Kane and The Undertaker were Playing tribute, paying tribute to him, and uh, CM Punk used that as a kettle prod to poke at The Undertaker, where The Undertaker did uh, accept the challenge, and as, as I keep saying, off to the races these guys were. Uh, CM Punk was all over the place, uh, The Undertaker was on form, he was all over the place, and what a great, great match it was. The best in the world against one of the absolute best ever. And oh, what a great, great match it was. And in my opinion, that was actually the best match of WrestleMania 29. Uh, and you actually thought CM Punk was going to come out, come out on top. Uh, where Triple, you thought Triple H was going to do it before, you thought Edge was going to do it before, you thought Randy Orton was going to do it before, but you really, really thought deep down that CM Punk was going to be the one to take 
the streak. But no, The Undertaker prevailed, hit him with a tombstone pile driver, and The Undertaker is now 21 and 0. And then going forward into WrestleMania 30. Uh, this match, in my honest opinion, didn't need to happen. Uh, WrestleMania 30, he is going up against Brock Lesnar. Now, in my honest opinion, uh, this match shouldn't have happened. Uh, the Undertaker was not in a very well state. Uh, so much so, somehow, and somewhere in the match, The Undertaker becomes concussed. And uh, nobody calls it. The referee doesn't call it. Call it, you know. Uh, the Undertaker could have could have uh, called it, but no, uh, it kept going. And Brock Lesnar had won that match. Uh, in my opinion, Brock Lesnar didn't need to win the match. Uh, he didn't need that ride going into his uh, WWF WWE Championship match. At SummerSlam against John Cena, you know it's. Uh, I just feel it didn't need to happen. Uh, the streak didn't need to end. Uh, the referee could have called it as an ODQ. The streak would have stayed intact. But no, uh, Vince McMahon felt that on that day, it was time to call it a day on the streak, and Brock Lesnar was the person to do it. I disagree. Do you guys disagree? Uh, because, in my honest opinion, uh, Brock Lesnar was the wrong guy. There was another guy that it should have been to do it first. That guy is in another video for another time. Uh, but yeah, didn't need to happen at all. Uh, the Undertaker didn't need to lose that day. Uh, now... Before I go, I'm going to give you the rating system here. And I'm going to get my notes here just so I don't miss anything. Now, WrestleMania 19, the handicap match against the Big Show and Albert. I'm going to give that match four stars. Simply because The Undertaker was going two on one in a handicap match and he managed to pull it off. So four stars for that. Kane 2. At a WrestleMania 20, where it all began again, I'm going to give this four stars. Simply because it was not as great as the WrestleMania 14 match, which I gave five stars to. So, this match gets four stars. WrestleMania 21 against Randy Orton, I'm going to give that four stars as well. Because Randy Orton was na nearly there. He nearly did it. Uh, so four stars for that one. Mark Henry at WrestleMania 22, I'm giving two stars to. Simply because of how stiff Mark Henry was against The Undertaker. Uh, the Undertaker tried his best, but you know, it, you, it, you need your dance partner to be on game with you, especially when it comes to a casket match. Uh, so two stars for that match. WrestleMania 23, against uh, Dave Batista, I'm going to give four stars to. Simply because of what I said about the two big bulls going at it, and Dave Batista really, really shone, really shined at this match. Uh, the Undertaker made him look good, vice versa, great, great match. So four stars. Edge at WrestleMania 24, I'm going to give five stars to. Simply because it was a much better match and this was one of the better matches that The Undertaker had had in years overall. Not just at WrestleMania, uh, but any other match that he's had uh, up to this point. So five stars. WrestleMania 25 and 26 against Shawn Michaels. WrestleMania 25 gets a five star. WrestleMania 26 gets a four star. Simply because... That WrestleMania 25 was the first and it just sucked all the air out of everybody. So five stars for that and four stars for the, the career versus the streak. Uh, great, great set of matches overall though. Uh, 
WrestleMania 27 and 28 against Triple H. WrestleMania 27, I'm going to give four stars to. WrestleMania 28, I'm going to give three stars to. WrestleMania 27, great match between both The Undertaker and Triple H. Just a shame of how it ended for The Undertaker. WrestleMania 28, it was a fight. It was not a wrestling match. Yes, there was choke slams, spine busters, perries, tombstone power drivers, even a super kick. Uh, but it's it's not worth any higher than the rating that I've just given. The match with CM Punk at WrestleMania 29, I'm going to give that a five stars. Simply because uh, CM Punk, he was the best in the world and he was going up against one of the absolute best ever. So five stars for that. WrestleMania 30 against Brock Lesnar. I'm going to give it three stars. Uh, in fact, I tell a lie. I'm going to give it two stars simply because it should not have continued. As soon as The Undertaker was concussed, it should have stopped. Uh, the match should have stopped. It should not have continued. And Brock Lesnar should not have beaten The Undertaker on that day. So I take back what I just said. Two stars for that. Uh, do you guys agree with the rating system that I've done with these matches? Comment below. Let me know. What's your, what was your favourite out of those matches that I've just mentioned? Uh, so I'm going to end it here. Thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please keep a watch out for part three. Uh, it'll be, it should be done very, very soon. But other than that, take care, guys. Stay safe and good journey.